the format of being robot. This is it. The moment everyone's been waiting for, the finale of the infamous July 25th, 2005 saga I've created. For months now, I've been dealing with weird events in weird time periods, from July 25th, 2005, to 5.30 p.m., to March 30th, 2006, and finally, the November 10th, 1999 and 2011 interruption incidents. This took place just yesterday, July 25th, 2023. I was in my shed looking for the supposed beta DVD that was said during the 2011 tape. Finally, I found a USB drive marked, in capital letters, filth, in messy writing. I was genuinely shocked seeing people enjoy some of the creepiest moments from this one specific broadcast incident, from the floating SpongeBob, the inverted colored gorilla in I had an accident, the robotic chanting Squidward, the black void SpongeBob in Hall Monitor, and finally new text pointing me to a USB drive. I plugged the USB drive into a laptop and a video opens up named as filth.mp4. It starts with the same exact moment from the SpongeBob bootleg incident I caught before. At the 14 mark, it freezes as the audio continues, and then something new happens, an argument was heard from a woman and a man. At this point, I had turned up the audio to listen closely, I was able to translate the video in its entirety as such. To be here, for the next three hours. Because that's how far I'm willing to go to get information out of you. I'm giving you all that I have. You're pissing me off is what you're doing. You're pissed off by everything. So what, you get too close to the fire, you get burnt. You have any clue, any fucking clue at all, who that hit even was, that you fuckers killed. You care too much about some guy you've never met and, well, now you'll never meet him. You think I give a damn? I think you do give a damn. You're so angry over all of this, I and for what? It won't bring anyone back. Not even your brother. You nasty son of a bitch. I don't care anymore. This interview is over. I'm done talking to you. Go find someone else to bother Fine. you. Fine. Shit. Put that down, right now. You know what? No one has to get hurt here. Just put that right back in its sheath. I think I'm going to cleanse ourselves. Me and my buddy here. Of all the all the filth, the stench of your disgusting breath in the air, speaking nonsense, starting here and now. I quickly turned down the volume. I was beyond words. My mouth was agape. My eyes were bulged, and my face was coated with a thick layer of sweat. A message popped up. It looked identical to the one from March 30th, 2006, but the date was different. It said this. July 25th, 2023. How dare you? How fucking dare you? Not only have you ruthlessly killed, but at that it is a close friend who was just about to hand in his sorries. But he had to die in your hands because you do not really know who I am. Unforgivable. Truly unforgivable. The only screenshot I was able to salvage with my shaking and quivering hands. I tried to speak something but my mouth only made stuttering sounds. Quickly, I dialed my best friend's phone number and asked him to meet him at a cafe spot. Afterwards, I went to bed, only thinking about the message and the two people's voices. The next morning, I compiled a USB thumb drive of multiple screenshots and events and went to the cafe. My buddy at the time had his laptop out. He placed the USB thumb drive in and investigated the pictures closely. Then, about three minutes later, he comes up with an interesting detail. The house. He spoke after sipping his coffee. What house? I asked, sitting down and focusing on him. The original owners of the house were a couple from Tennessee who moved into your house. I specifically remember the couple's names, Aaron Pickett and Judy Swift. Judy went mental after their son went missing around 2005, which is why the events happened before. About the pictures, Aaron was an ex-employee of Nickelodeon Studios who used to run operations on running TV shows on air, but some of the frames in the department were heavily edited, leaving Judy in a mental breakdown. Here's the newspaper. He slides a newspaper article back in 2005 that read, Missing son still on large, manhunt takes four months to investigate. I couldn't believe it. 
This whole entire thing was connected to a scary and tragic tale of a couple. Now, it didn't start during the incident of yesterday in 2005. He added. But it did start earlier than that, June 23, 2003. I thought for a bit before my eyes bulged again. Wow, was all I said. What do we do now? I asked him. He took another sip of his coffee and sighed. We can't send them to the police since it's been dormant for years. All we can do is put it to rest. In the end, that's what I did. I sold off my cable box, sold off some DVDs I didn't want and made about 50 bucks in total. Years passed by and I completely forgot about the whole thing, and to think. It all started when Spongebob fell flat on his face 